the miniature American Shepherd. This breed is also known as the miniature Australian Shepherd. And today we will describe and give you more insight into this breed. So, <laughs> fans should will tell you that uh, Australian uh, Shepherd Dog, which is an uh, American breed, not Australian, has always had its uh, size varieties and uh, therefore also the miniature Australian Shepherd was always there. And as such, the miniature Australian Shepherd is a working breed that was always part of the Australian Shepherd uh, breed. Well, this might be the case. They also say that the DNA is uh, similar. This is not completely true. Because, of course, all working dogs have uh, varieties in size and appearance that just work. And this could be a good thing, but they also uh, developed the Australian Shepherd dog for one purpose. That purpose was to handle the cattle that came from Australia. And that cattle was a lot more feral than uh, that of normal uh, cattle they used to know. And it needed to be handled by a stronger type of dog. And the dog that they used as the backbone of their breeding program was also not from Australia, not also not from the United States of America. It's from the Basque region, close to Spain, where they uh, had their own uh, livestock, cattle type of dogs. And it was also infused with some other breeds. And I think also the Australian cattle dog has played a role in its uh, existence. And why? Of course, if you have a dog that already works, this type of cattle in their own uh, Australia environment and they have troubles managing it in the United States when the, the cattle came in for meat. Of course they will also look at how their Australian buddies uh, are coping and they bring some of those dogs along to breed the stock that they already had. So that's the backbone of the Australian Shepherd dog which is an American breed. The name Australia is just referring to the cattle it needed to herd. So cattle, in this case, are bulls and cows and are a lot stronger than the sheep. So therefore also the Australian Shepherd Dog is a lot stronger type of dog and also a lot more brave and more physical than for example Border Collie, which is developed to herd sheep. Also in Australia you have the Kelpie Dog, which is a lot a milder but faster dog and yet they're straight in cattle dog and the latter is for managing cattle it's a lot more bully head and also a lot more physical strong courageous the kelpie is for herding sheep and it's even a lot more physical than for example border collie already is so back to the miniature australian shepherd that after a while changed his name into the miniature American uh, Shepherd and is now also uh, an FCE recognized breed so they can use it for show purposes etc. What they did is uh, especially one one horse enthusiast had a small Australian Shepherd dog and uh, she liked that and she developed a line along that uh, dog and that gave rise to the miniature uh, American Shepherd as we know it today and uh, they say they now they make stories that they are very good with uh, sheep because they are smaller and they can also come in places where the bigger dogs could not uh, come. Of course this is true, but this is just a romanticization of the story. 
she needed the dog that was a little bit smaller to accompany her to all the horse shows and that way she had a smaller Australian uh, Shepherd dog and after a while these, uh, these small dogs were very uh, popular and her line helped to uh, settle the breed in. There are also some drawbacks, especially because they say the DNA is completely the same. So what that means is that you're uh, using the smaller specimens every time to breed a miniature variety of a certain type of dog. But the drawbacks are that instead of using, for example, a smaller breed to breed them down in size, uh, you, uh, one, you get uh, a smaller genetic uh, foundation because you only use those small dogs, so not the total population. And two, why are those dogs small? Oftentimes, a dog that is very small is also called the runt of the litter, and they are often not the strongest dogs. So what do you get? You are breeding a smaller genetic foundation out of dogs that are mostly run of the litters. And three, they also, because they went overboard and tried to get them as small as possible, you also introduce things like dwarfism. So, for example, there are very uh, small monkeys, yeah? they're a separate breed, and then you have bigger monkeys, but if you are going to breed, for example, gorillas to be the size of chimpanzees, you get dwarfism. I hope this uh, helps you to get some insight. Or if you would look into the human situation, if you look at the Maasai people in Africa, they are very big eh, as a tribe, and then you have the pygmy people who are very small. If you try to breed the Maasai people the size of the pygmy people, you will get dwarfism. So that's another uh, drawback. And those combined have given rise to uh, quite also some uh, detrimental effects. For example, loss of vitality because of inbreeding depression, dwarfism as I mentioned. And of course, those uh, smaller dogs have their audience. Eh? Also, you have, for example, now a, a miniature bull terrier next to the full-size bull terrier. But in the past, they also always were there. And also, especially a miniature bull terrier was more of a derivative from the red pit bull and terriers, whereas the full size one was more of a canine to canine uh, bull and terriers derivative. So that is going to be a little bit different. And also, if you breed in other breeds, for example, additional amount of small steps of boot, you can again increase the genetic diversity with the boot area. And so as a result this uh, coefficient of inbreeding is a little bit less in the miniature boot area as it is in the regular size boot area. That's, that's not the case with the miniature Australian Shepherd or now known as the miniature American Shepherd. Well I hope you liked this video. Have a great day. Oh yeah, the dog on the leash is my pet, the dog terrier. Estacado.